things what happened in that account. When Jesus entered in and he drove out the money changers, he shook things up and he cried out, what a cry. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. We make the house of God what it is. Did you hear me? We make the house of God what it is. Jesus said, my house is to be called a house of what? Prayer. But you, religious leaders, you who know better, have made it a den of thieves. I have had to cleanse this temple. May it remain cleansed. But they didn't hearken unto his voice. But when he cleansed the temple and declared it to be a house of prayer, crying out to his father, all of a sudden, note that verse 14, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. When again the temple was cleansed, the miracle power of God showed up. I'm going to tell you, if we can cleanse our churches, we will again see the demonstration of the power of God among the people. Oh, hallelujah. May this thing be returned to the church. Why don't we see the miracle, supernatural power of God? It's because the house needs to be cleansed. We have made the house of God what it is. We can make it a skilled, polished program. We can make it palatable for people to enjoy and to socialize. Some of these things have a place in our lives to interconnect with one another. But my house, Jesus said, shall be called a house of prayer. We're losing something in Pentecost. I remember even as a little boy, Pastor, when they used to pray and seek God and it sounded like a maternity ward. You'd walk in and they were crying out to God. They were playing games around their faces before God. Their tears would be streaming like rivers. They were getting a hold of God. They were pulling down strongholds. They were scattering the powers of darkness. They were preparing the way of the Lord. Holy conviction would come upon the place that people would literally run to the altar. We need to see it again. I remember in the city of Deseronto or a town of Deseronto was holding meetings. I was just a young preacher in my 20s and never had this experience before, but as I was preaching, all of a sudden the holy presence of God came. They had the communion set at the front. And I cried out, I, it was not me, it was the Holy Spirit said, Do not come near my table, saith the Lord, for your hands are not clean and your hearts are not pure. I will do as I did to Ananias and Sapphira. Well, the fear of God hit the plates. I heard a thud behind me and the pastor thud right on the floor, groaning and crying out to God. And I stood there and I saw the congregation. They were literally dropping out of their seats. They began to crawl trying to get to the front. Most of them couldn't even get any further than just laid out on their faces before God. I stood, I said, what do I do? The Holy Spirit said, you do nothing more. It's already done. Hallelujah. How many know when the Holy Ghost shows up? We need the Holy Ghost. Oh, we need the Holy Ghost back in our churches again. We've insulted him. We've grieved him. We've quenched him. What's going to convince these young people up here? It's not our fancy programs or our talents or our abilities, but it will be the mighty demonstration of the power of God. It will be the mighty anointing of the Holy Ghost. I said to my son before we took them to the airport, I want a gathering of my three youngest grandchildren. My son and his wife, and we sat there and I said, now after we have our devotions, Papa is going to lay hands upon you with your daddy and we're going to impart patriarchal blessing. 
because the Spirit of the Lord is going to be upon my grandchildren, because that's the promise of God, upon our children and upon our children's children. The word of the Lord shall not depart out of their mouth, and the Spirit of the Lord shall abide upon them all the days of their lives. Somebody's got to get a hold of God. And so we believe the Lord, and it was a precious moment just yesterday. And we put our hand upon the eldest one. He's just turned 13. He's already six foot two. I have to look up to my 13-year-old grandson. They said he's likely going to be about six foot eight. That's what they predict. So I'm treating him real good right now. But I want him to know the anointing. And so after we prayed, then we went to the little girl, the next one. I noticed that the 13-year-old went and put his hand upon his sister like I did and her father. And I said, that's good, Jared. That's good. Put your hand there. We release the blessing. Now the older brother is imparting to his little sister the spirit of the Lord. The six-year-old, he's a challenge. But we pray double anointing on him. Hallelujah. Keep this little boy. They're going to prophesy. I see them in the Spirit singing in the anointing. Speaking the Word of God under a powerful anointing. We can claim our children for the glory of God. They're not belonging to the devil. They belong to the King of Kings. That's what thrill my heart to hear Justin sing this morning. Praise God. Not just a song. He has a great voice, but the anointing, something was coming through. I said, whoa, he's got it. That is the thing I look for. I know the anointing. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by our might or talent or ability. If I cannot connect people with God, then I have failed. Some people say, we've watched you over the years in ministry. What is it? Something happens. I said, it's the anointing. I wait for a moment when the Holy Spirit takes over. I catch the current of the Spirit wind. And you don't have to struggle anymore. You just ride the current. Hallelujah. And He takes you up, up, up into the presence of God. There you behold the face of the Holy One. And you are totally renewed and refreshed in His presence. Glory to God. How awesome the presence of God is. May we understand this. So my house shall be called a house of prayer. It shall be called a house of power. I want to say, I go to a church where the power of God is demonstrated. You can come to a church where you can get a miracle. Hallelujah. The blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. If anybody died, then they should be raised up. I was in one of my TV rallies down eastern Canada, and uh, they, they, I saw some commotion at the back, and they came up and said, that one of the pastor's wife just dropped dead at the back. I said, nobody drops dead in my service. Bring her up here. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing what you feel when you're under the anointing? Now, if I didn't have the anointing on me, I'd well, so call the undertaker. You know, get her on out of here. I said, bring her up here on the platform. They brought her lifeless body and just laid it right at the front. And everybody's, you know, that, that's kind of a stunned moment. How many understand that? But I was still under the anointing of God. I felt the surge of power. And I believe that the resurrection and the life, the giver, was present with us. And she just passed away. Her spirit couldn't have gone too far. We just said, come on back into this body in the name of Jesus. Her eyes opened. And she got up and walked back to her seat and enjoyed the rest of the service. Hallelujah. So if you have any idea of dying, is not going to do it here this morning. Amen. Because we believe in the resurrection and the power. The Lord said in the ministry, I want three W's. I want worship. I want the Word of God, and I want you to demonstrate the works of God. And I want that portrayed on the television across the nation. And I remember as we set it out week by week, they brought an East Indian lady from a Hindu background, and they brought her to the front, and she was noticeably pregnant and uh, was soon to deliver. But I said, what is her problem? They could see they were getting my attention. I they said, the baby is dead in her womb, and they're going to take the baby from her tomorrow. 
and they have done the test. There's no life in the baby. I said, bring the woman on the platform. I said, how many, looking at all those few thousand out there, are going to agree with me for a miracle of God for this dear Hindu lady? And of course, the hands went up, and I said, let's agree together. We began to pray. We spoke resurrection power into that baby. When she went to the doctor the next day, so that they thought they were going to take out a dead baby, they brought forth a live baby. Somebody say, praise the Lord. It is time for God to do an awesome work among His people. It is time to see the glory and the majesty of God again to the church. But it will not come until the house of God is a house of prayer. We've got to be back on our faces before God. I was so thrilled when I heard about the church, the, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church in uh, New York. They have more on a Monday night prayer meeting than on a Sunday. I said, can you imagine that? They just come and they just call on God. No wonder God's doing the works they're doing. On a Monday night, Holy Ghost prayer. No preaching, no singing, just good old-fashioned Holy Ghost praying. Hallelujah. My house shall be called a house of prayer. We can again recover if we again go back to the old past and that which worked for our forefathers will work today. If we will pay the price of seeking God, we want everything instant. It will not happen with a snap of the finger, but it will happen as we intercede and pour out our hearts before God in prayer. I'd like to get to an old-fashioned prayer meeting. You can either lay down, sit up, walk, whatever you want to do, but just cry it out. 